good morning everyone so uh, today we will study on the coastal geomorphology uh, as the name suggests you can understand that the, it is the geomorphological processes and the landforms produced by those processes which are found in the coastal areas now so far we have learned uh, different processes and particularly um, the sub aerial processes which are occurring in the particularly in the land and due to the active occurrence of those processes different kinds of landforms are produced um, say for example such as the glacier processes and glacial landforms fluvial processes and landforms aeolian processes and landforms but in all these cases they are strictly restricted to the uh, inner part of the land areas but if you consider the total earth surfacial condition we know that around 70 percent of the earth surface is covered by water and a large amount of the land mass is in direct contact with the uh, surface oceanic water and but those regions are known as the coastal regions which is basically and uh, transition point or you may say a transition area between the land area and the ocean water area so those areas those transition areas between land and ocean they face a different array of geomorphic processes they will face the aeolian conditions that is the wind activities as well as some different geomorphic processes which is particularly observed or very well observed in the ocean water that is the waves and tides so all the coastal areas found in the uh, recent day um, continental landmass that is the where the landmass is in connection with the ocean body they suffer mainly three processes that is the activity of wind the activity of wave and activity of tide so due to the co-occurrence of these three processes the coastal area produce a vast array of landforms so in this chapter we will study the main coastal processes which are occurring in those regions and the landforms produced by those processes so the first process we start today's class which we found in the uh, ocean water near the coastal regions is the activity of wave now waves are the dominant driving mechanism in the coastal process and due to the occurrence of this process the coastal areas may suffer erosion um, the sediments in the coastal area transported from one place to another place and in some cases the coastal areas also face some deposition so both by erosion and deposition different landforms are produced in the coastal areas now the first question comes how these waves generated now in ocean areas where there is active flow of wind that is wind moving across the uh, water surface of the ocean then the wind blown over the ocean water they came into contact with the ocean water and due to that it suffers some kinds of friction so this frictional force drag the ocean water of the wind suppose in this picture the wind is moving from left to right so now when the wind which is very close to the ocean water if 
it came into contact with the water so basically that wind drag the ocean water towards the down current direction towards the flow direction of the wind so thereby it drags the ocean water more uh, faster compared to other points in the flow direction so in this way it produces some bulge in certain intervals such that you can see in this portion it creates some bulge then some shadow areas are created and again some bulge created so the wind came into contact directly in this portion this is the shadow portion again came into contact in this portion so that is why periodically some kinds of bulging of oceanic water was observed in the ocean so you can see the bulges produced due to friction of water and wind and some shadow areas which are the depressed areas which is known as trough the bulges are known as crest the top point of the bulge is known as crest and the uh, extreme most bottom point of the shadow areas is known as trough so there are alternative crest and trough areas are produced now what actually we do if you consider a certain uh, point or certain a ball or a molecule of water here so wind basically drag this or push this ball into the forward direction into this direction now when it comes to the shadow areas then it falls so gradually this water particle moving in this direction in this circular orbital path now this kind of circular motion is active in the bottom waters also but the the activity or the strength of this circular motion gradually decreases as we go deeper into the ocean water and after some time as you can see in this picture that the orbital path of this uh, water molecule is gradually decreasing the diameter is gradually decreasing so that means the effect of these frictional force between wind and water it is maximum at the surface and this motion this surfacial water motion basically comes in contact with other water molecules and they starts this or they are reason they are the reason which uh, basically activate the orbital motion of other molecules so these um, lower water molecules or these portions they also start to move in a orbital path but gradually in the deeper part the activity of this orbital motion is gradually decreasing so you can see that uh, gradually the diameter of the orbital path towards the bottom is decreasing and it was found that after some depth there is no such orbital motion found so this orbital motion this circular motion of water particle is only of observed up to certain depth now up to which depth this circular motion is observed that is dependent on the wavelength so what is wavelength wavelength is the successive length or successive distance between two successive crest points or you can say it is the distance between two successive trough points also so this is the wavelength that is the distance between two successive crest and the activity of this circular motion uh, into the depth is observed up to that distance which is half of the wavelength that is if wavelength is defined as lambda then the depth up to which this circular motion is observed is lambda by 2 so that is the depth up to which this 
orbital motion or the circular motion of water particles water molecules is observed in natural condition in normal condition so when there is a fair weather so this depth that is the depth up to which the waves normally affect that is the circular motion normally affect the all portions of the sea water and obviously the sea bottom also uh, that depth is called fair weather wave base here it is written as wave base now why i uh, use the term fair weather that i come into some later slides so this is my wavelength that is the distance from uh, distance between two successive crest points that is the wave base and here it is the amplitude that is the maximum distance between a trough point and a crest point it is known as amplitude or height so in this way due to the frictional effect of wind the energy in the wind is transformed into the uh, ocean water and due to that the particles or the ocean water molecules they try to or they rotate in a circular path that creates some kinds of bulge and some kinds of depression in the open ocean and this circular path is observed up to certain depth that is the depth of wave base which is half the wavelength now when this uh, undulations or when wind drag these waves towards the land areas you can see that there are numerous bulging and depressions and all these circular paths gradually moving towards the land areas now when the lowermost portion of this circular path that is the wave base this portion first touches the land areas then immediately this circular motion of water particles in this portion they came into contact with the bottom substrate and they suffer some kinds of frictional motion so thereby the speed of forward movement of these water particles gradually decreasing but the water particles above this point so the water particles at this point water particles in this uh, orbital path in these and in these they are not at all decreasing their speed because they are not came into contact with the bottom substrate so only those particles which are uh, which came into contact with the substrate they decrease their velocity so simultaneously gradually the when if this particle becomes uh, static suppose is this one if this particular velocity is decreased simultaneously the above particle their its velocity is also slightly decreased so gradually this decreasing occur but the surfacial water particles they are not at all decreasing their speed they are not at all decreasing their velocity so they are moving in still constant velocity by which they move in the open ocean so you can see that in this portion when the bottom of the circular path of the ocean water that is the wave base touch the bottom substrate it difference in velocity observed in the water molecules compared to the surface as well as in the bottom water so this straight line uh, vertical straight line water molecules orbital path here you can see it takes a bend because the bottom most water particles speed becomes slower and the surfacial water molecule speed is still in its uh, previous stage so gradually the surfacial water move, moves faster compared to the bottom water and that is why some kinds of upward projection occurs the waves become 
more narrowly distant that is uh, it's called um, wave gathering that means the wavelength between two successive crests decrease and thereby the wave heights increasing more bulging occurs into the crest and when their uh, sufficient height achievement occurs then they freely fall in the moving direction that is the wave breaks towards the land areas so in this way the waves formed due to the frictional effect of wind blown over it and they gradually move towards the land areas now there are some measurement uh, properties or measurement characters such as the wavelength which i already told you that is the distance between two successive crest or you may say the distance between two successive uh, trough points the wave period which is demarcated as t is the time it takes for two wave crests to pass a same point wave velocity which is the ratio between the wavelength and the uh, wave period and wave height and amplitude the vertical distance between a crest point and a trough point so you can see that the wave basically a result of a moving air through a open uh, water body so if there was no air or no moving air blowing over this water body then there may be no wave formed so the formation of wave depends on three factors the first one is the phase of the wind phase means the distance over which the wind has blown that is the more and more distance wind blown over this open uh, water body the wave formation is more pronounced more, is good so that is why you can see some small undulations happened in large lakes whereas they are not happen into some smaller ponds because the distance of uh, wind blowing over this water body that is wind came into contact in that water body in the smaller ponds is very less distance so the frictional force is not occurring well to form any kind of undulations in the in that particular water body whereas when the wind blown over a large water body such as the lakes and the dam uh, water dams and oceans here wind came into contact with a huge distance of water body so that is why they are able to generate the undulations next is the strength of the wind that is how much uh, energy the wind particles they have that directly uh, relates to the velocity of wind blown over the water body so that is why in the uh, fair weather condition we can see smaller waves whether in disturbed weather condition that is is extreme weather condition say for example in the cyclones or typhoons there the speed of the wind or the velocity of the wind is very high so in that condition automatically uh, the energy from the wind more and more energy from the uh, blowing wind is transferred within the uh, water molecules so in those cases we can see large sized waves so in that case automatically when the large sized waves are formed then automatically the waves uh, amplitude the wavelength are also increases and not only that the wave base is also goes far deeper so that is why in those cases the wave base is known as storm weather wave base that is we try to differentiate it from the fair weather conditions so in storm weather wave base the wavelength between two successive uh, waves is uh, greater wavelength is higher 
amplitude is also higher and the wave base that is up to the date up to which the activity of wave is observed that is this depth this depth is also increasing so that is why we call it as storm weather wave base in contrast with the relatively shallower depth in fair weather condition which is known as fair weather wave base now compare the waves found in the deeper water and waves found in the shallower water there is a difference between the characters characters of these waves in these two regions they have a larger wavelength they have smaller in amplitude and the wave base is as the condition was if it is fair weather wave base then the wave uh, base is it's at certain depth if it is storm weather then wave base is at certain depth now when the waves are in the shallower portion then the distance between two successive waves gradually decrease that is the wave length decreases and the amplitude of the wave is increasing and depending on the condition whether it is a fair weather condition then the wave base touches at relatively uh, shallow depth the bottom ocean bottom whether when the condition is stormy condition in that case the wave base touches the bottom substrate at relatively higher depth so depending on the weather condition the wave base also varies and the circular motion of the water particles touch the bottom substrate at different depths in the ocean bottom now why do wave breaks waves as i call as i already said you that waves are the result of the flow of wind and due to that the energy of wind transformed into the ocean water so as they approach land they break that means the wave break now during their approach towards the land the bottom of the wave touches the bottom substrate and slows down due to increased friction but the top of the wave that still have higher velocities and it moves faster compared to the bottom portion so it gradually becomes higher and steeper until it topples over that is until it breaks so that is the reason because of the contact of the lower portion of the uh, this circular motion of these water particles that is the wave vortexes uh, because of this contact in the lower most portion the increase in wave height or amplitude occurs the shortening of wave length occurs and wave breaking occurs near the coastal areas now wave breaking can be of three types the first type is known as spilling breaker this type of breaker is generally associated with gentle ocean bottom slopes that means the where the uh, slope of the ocean bottom or the where the slope of the coastal area is very gentle or almost uh, horizontal nearly horizontal in these conditions the water from the crest cascades down the wave front so gradually the water um, without being uh, falling in the front side the wave breaks slowly that is losing its energy slowly and 
white water that is the foams lots of foams uh, appeared during this spilling in the second type which is known as the plunging breaker the crest curls over and crashes down on the advancing wave base these are more characteristic of relatively uh, steeper slopes of the ocean bottom now plunging breakers occur when wave approaches a moderate to steep uh, bottoms that is moderate to steeper uh, slopes in this kind type wave increase their height or altitude and after some time they suddenly crash or fall into the uh, forward direction with some considerable energy the third type is known as the surging breaker these kinds of breaker is observed when the slope is very steep and these breakers occur when there was long wave period low amplitude of waves and these kinds of waves approach towards the coastal areas which have very steep shores now these kinds of breaker occur due to sudden interaction of the ocean bottom because as the waves move towards the coastal areas suddenly it interacts with the ocean bottom so due to due to this sudden interaction the wave energy is compressed very suddenly just very close to the um, coastal area very close to the shoreline and the wave breaks right onto the beach so these kinds of uh, breaker particularly found in the rocky coastal areas where the slope of the ocean bottom is very steep and these kinds of breaker is known as surging breaker now apart from these three main way breaking you often you may often heard a third type which is known as collapsing breaker the collapsing breaker is basically a intermediate form between the plunging breaker and the surging breaker now another interesting phenomenon observed in the coastal areas that is known as wave refraction now what in it decreases in wavelength that is the distance between two successive crest gradually decreasing decrease in velocity as well as decreasing amplitude now due to this three processes happened when the uh, wave approaches towards coast that is the when the wave base touches the bottom ocean substrate these three things happened now it is often happened that uh, our land areas that is the interaction uh, points of the land and the ocean water is not straight always so it may show these kinds of curved contacts that is the curved contact line between the land and the ocean waters now when waves approach towards these land areas then in some points the waves touch the bottom substrate that is the wave base touch the bottom substrate far before than in other areas so if you compare the uh, wave base contact in these two points in this case here the wave base touches the bottom substrate far before than these areas here the water depth is still sufficient that the wave base did not touch the bottom substrate so 
due to the prior touching of wave base to the bottom substrate the velocity of wave in this portion becomes lower compared to this portion so there is a velocity difference within the same wave due to the prior touching of wave base with the bottom substrate so for that the wave refract that means the direction of movement of waves varies in these two portions this portion waves moves now moves slower and this portion waves is still moving in a faster velocity so the difference in distance of movement occur in these two areas for the same wave that means the portion of the wave which touches the bottom substrate fast and the other portion of the wave which still did not touch the bottom substrate due to this difference the velocity difference occur in those two areas and for that the waves make a bend and this is called wave refraction so now you can see that the waves in these two areas is gradually takes a curved shape and that is due to the different time of touching of wave base with the bottom substrate in these two areas now when wave breaks or when wave comes very close to the land areas then as the water travels up to the coastal area travels up to the land that is the coming of water into the land area after the breaking of wave near the coastal area the coming of water is known as swash and after swash some amount of water returns again to the sea which is called backwash swash with respect to the interaction line between the or interaction points between the land areas and the um, sea waters so depending on the coastal line the wave different wave uh, refraction occurs and therefore swash can hit the uh, land areas swash can hit the uh, beach areas at different direction but the backwash that will always move perpendicular to the shoreline or perpendicular to the coastline so backwash is always perpendicular but swash perpendicular to the shoreline but swash is can come into the shoreline or can hit the shoreline at any possible direction and that occurs due to wave refraction mainly the next important process found in the coastal waters or coastal regions that is tide tide is basically results from the gravitational attraction or force of moon and sun exerted on the water body of earth surface now we know that the gravitational attraction force is depending on the mass of the two bodies as well as the distance of the two bodies now in case of gravitational attraction force of moon and sun over the earth the effect of gravitational attraction or force of moon over the earth surficial water is much higher compared to sun although the mass of sun is much much higher in comparison to moon but the guiding factor is the distance between earth and sun and the distance between earth and moon so at as the distance between earth and moon is much lower compared to the distance of earth and sun so 
the effect of gravitational force on the earth's surface water due to the attraction of moon is much higher compared to the gravitational attraction force of sun so the attraction force of moon is the main guiding force for which the areas of the earth surface which directly faces the moon in those areas a kind of bulging in the surface water found and that bulging is called tide so high tide occurs in those parts of the ocean which directly face the moon whereas low tide occurs at the same time in those parts which are at angular distance of 90 degree to the high tide regions so the regions which directly face the moon and the opposite direction is facing the high tides whereas the other areas they faces the low tides so here you can see the picture that in this portion in this this is the direction of moon so moon lies here some uh, distant distance away and these are the places which directly faces the moon so these areas water surficial water they face much attractional force of moon the opposite side of the earth surface they there are some similar kind of bulging is also found to occur but that is due to some centrifugal effect so the two sides the one side facing directly moon and the opposite side of the earth surface both these areas faces high tide when they direct when they are in line with the moon and the other areas of the earth surface they are facing low tides now the bulging of the earth surface in these two areas that is in these high tide areas if you compare the bulging the bulging of the earth surface which directly face the moon is relatively higher compared to the opposite sides so bulging of water is relatively higher in these areas whereas bulging is relatively uh, lower in the high tide condition in these areas so the attractional force of moon acts in the two sides that is the side facing directly to moon and the opposite sides of the earth surface and that is why some bulging of water surface in the earth occur and due to that tides occur in these two areas now as earth rotates around its axis and it takes 24 hours to complete a complete rotation of earth around its own axis so each point of earth face twice tidal activity during the rotation of its earth axis suppose this point is now facing high tide when the moon's position is here after 12 hours when the point comes at this condition that is the opposite side which faces the moon then this point again faces a high tide activity due to the centrifugal effect so again this point faces a high tide so within the entire day time within the entire 24 hours time a single point experience twice tidal activity so that is why it is called duinal tidal cycle that is a tidal activity on a single point observed twice in a day now when earth rotates around its own axis at the same time moon is also rotating in its orbital path around earth so thereby the point which now directly facing the moon this point after 12 hours is not exactly in opposite direction to moon 
because at the same time moon is slightly shifting in its orbital path so the two tides in the dwindler tidal cycle are just over 12 and half hours so it requires 12 and half hours to face the, the same point because at the same time moon is also shifting its position around its own axis so in dwindler tidal cycle an area faces twice tidal activity in a complete 24 hour duration but uh, in this uh, dwindler tidal activity a point on earth will pass under one high bulge that is during that time when it faces directly the uh, moon surface and at about 12 and a half hours over it faces a relatively lower bulge which is now opposite uh, to the moon facing surface so this is the duinal tidal cycle which is mainly governed by the attractional force of moon now the moon also rotates around the earth and at the same time earth also face some kinds of attractional force by sun so now the tidal activity which is responsible both for the attractional force of sun and moon is known as the nip spring tidal cycle now when the sun moon and earth are all in the same line either moon is situated within earth and sun or earth is situated within moon and sun in both these conditions all these three uh, celestial bodies they are came within a single linear alignment and this type of alignment is known as saizigi saizigi another position is found to occur when the occurrence of moon is at right angle to the sun and earth line either moon can occur in this first quarter or moon can occur in this last quarter so both this in both this uh, condition moon is at 90 degree to the line joining the sun and the earth this is known as this alignment is known as quadratic alignment quadratic this is a single term quadratic alignment now this happens due to the these different positions of moon happened due to the rotation of moon around the earth now we know that moon takes about 30 days to complete a complete rotation around earth so in almost every seven and a half days moon changes its orbital position about 90 degrees every alternate 15 days the sun moon and earth came in a single line that is they showing this saizigi position so when these three objects came in same line then the earth surficial water faced the maximum gravitational attraction force due to the combined effect of sun and moon so in this condition in saizigi condition the earth surficial water face maximum tidal activity 
and this tide is known as spring tide so spring tide may happen in this condition when moon is in between earth and sun spring tide happen also in this condition when earth is in between moon and sun line in contrast in quadratic alignment when moon situated at 90 degree to the connecting line between sun and earth in this condition the attractional force of sun to the earth surface water try to create a bulge or attract the surface water in this line in this line but the perpendicular position of moon also attracts the surface water in this line so basically both these attractional force of sun and moon they occur perpendicular to each other and thereby they try to nullify each other so in this condition in quadratic alignment that is a weak after or before on either side of the uh, spring tide the bulging of water is not as much high as we can see in the spring tide conditions so in this kind of case in this quadratic alignment the bulging of water is relatively lower because the two attractional force due to sun and due to moon they try to nullify each other so this tide is known as nip tide so although in this condition tide occurs but the bulging of water is not as much high as we see in the spring tides so in spring tide condition we see we can see maximum bulging of ocean water apart from the previous two cycles that is the duinal tidal cycle which is mainly occur due to the attractional force of moon and the mid spring tidal cycle which is the combined effect of attractional force of sun and moon over the earth surface water there is another cycle superimposing on these two cycles which is known as annual tidal cycle now we know that not only moon but earth is also rotating around the uh, sun in its own orbital path and this orbital path is in uh, elliptical in nature so in this orbital path at the spring and autumn equinoxes at the spring and autumn equinoxes the earth is closest to the sun so in this two position the gravitational effect is maximum so in this two position tidal activity is also found to occur maximum whereas in mid summer and mid winter the sun is at farthest away from moon from earth that means in these two condition you can see that earth is farthest away so in these times the gravitational force of sun over the earth surface water is minimum so in these two conditions the tidal activity is found minimum to occur so this is called annual tidal cycle and this tidal cycle is found to occur due to the orbital path of earth around sun and during this orbital motion of earth around sun sometimes it goes close to the sun that is the distance between earth and sun is minimum whereas at some times the earth is farthest from the sun
so depending on this distance difference from the sun during the rotation of earth on its own orbital path the activity the effect of gravitational force on the earth surface water by sun is also varied and due to that the tidal activity tidal bulging on the earth surface water also varies this is known as annual tidal cycle so together what we see the tide in the earth's uh, surface water that is the effect the or that is the um, resultant effect of these three tidal cycle the first one is the duinal tidal cycle second is the nip spring tidal cycle and the third one is the annual tidal cycle now depending on the tidal bulging that means how much vertical difference occur during every bulging during every high tide we can divide the earth's tidal regions into certain uh, regions now tidal range is the difference in height between high and low tides the most extreme tidal range will occur around the time of the full and new moons that is when uh, sun earth and moon are at the same line of orientation that is at syzygy points or syzygy orientation and the gravitational force of both the sun and moon are pulling the same way in this uh, conditions so maximum tide uh, are found to occur in this uh, new moon and full moon condition depending on the tidal range that is how much vertical difference occurs between the low tide and high tide uh, the global coastal areas the global uh, transitional areas between land and marine waters they are divided into three regions when the tidal range is that is the difference between high tide and low tide is less than two meter we called it as micro tidal regions when the tidal range is in between two to four meter we called it meso tidal region and when the range is greater than four meter that is the effect of high tide difference in high tide and low tide water bulging vertical difference is maximum is very high greater than 4 meter then we call those regions as macro tidal regions now if we look at the coastal areas of india more or less all the places of the coastal areas of india they suffer a meso tidal condition that means more or less averagely all the places coastal places of india they suffer a tidal range between 2 to 4 meter between high tide and low tide so that's all for today's class hope you will understand the um, coastal processes that is mainly the wave and tide how they occur now in the next class we will continue about some different process other deep processes occurring in the coastal areas and after that the landforms produced by these processes and how they affect the coastal areas how these different processes affect the coastal areas that we will discuss in the next class thank you